The views and opinions expressed here on Wrestling Wind Down are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any other agency, organization, employer, or company. What's up, guys? It's Lo, and you are tuned in to Wrestling Wind Down, a female founded and hosted podcast dedicated to professional wrestling and our favorite adult beverage. March is recognized as Women's History Month, and I am so honored to have someone that I am inspired by here to join me to talk about some of the women in wrestling who are absolutely making waves in this community. I am joined by Candice Cordelia, who is a writer and contributor to Pro Wrestling Illustrated, Busted Open Radio, and many more. We are chatting about some of the amazing women that we have come across personally in this community, as well as some that you may or may not be aware of. Women's History Month is so important to me as a female-founded podcast because we must give our flowers to these women that are making waves, making history or herstory, should I say, in this community and recognize their hard work, not just during the month of March, but all year long. So grab your favorite glass of bubbly. We're going in for the three count. We are back with another episode of Wrestling Wind Down, and I am joined by wrestling and entertainment interviewer Candice Cordelia. You've probably seen her writing in PWI. You might have heard her on Busted Open, and now she is here on Wrestling Wind Down. How are you, Candice? I am great. It's so good to be back on Wrestling Wind Down, and I, I always have to say I love your voice, Lo. I just love how introed me in. It was so beautiful, so thank you. Thank you for joining me. So, we are going to be talking about Women's History Month. March is Women's History Month, and I feel like it's so important to have these type of conversations, even on a wrestling podcast. I know people expect me and my co-host or whoever I have on to come on here and talk about the craps and talk about the wine, but sometimes it's really important to talk about who we have in our community the individuals that are doing great things in our community and recognize them. Um, It's great that we have these different months, but we shouldn't just reflect on the one month, on just one Women's History Month or a Black History Month. There are so many people making waves year round, and I feel like everyone should receive their flowers, regardless of if it's a specific month. Absolutely agree. I love that. And yes, happy Women's History Month. This month came super fast. But at the same time, I think we're going to see a lot of really cool changes in the mix in wrestling and a lot of really excellent things. I mean, if we're looking at WWE, for an example, and our new tag team, Women's Champions, which is fantastic. I didn't even see the show, but I saw the end result and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing. So yeah, let's do it, Lo. I want to talk about Women's History Month specifically in regards to the wrestling media world. When I first started wrestling wind down with my friend, we were in college and when we did our research, we noticed that there was a lack of female representation within professional wrestling media. That kind of happens in sports. There aren't a lot of women showcased. Now I feel like just within the wrestling sphere, there's so many women from all different walks of life who are able to get on the microphone, whether they're talking about current events in wrestling or past events or speaking with wrestlers themselves. I feel like we have such a amazing group of women in wrestling media but now it's even transcending that podcast world you know we have women writers for pwi like you we have women promoters we have women that are you know doing youtube twitch what i feel like this shows is that it does not matter where you're from and you know what path you've gone down you can get to become something in wrestling, whether you're in the ring or you're outside of the ring. There's so many women who have made an impact and they might have never thought that they'd be in this position where they'd be a podcaster, they'd be a YouTuber, they'd be in wrestling media. And it's so great that we have such a plethora of smart, amazing, beautiful, knowledgeable, knowledgeable emphasis on that because I know the men love to tussle when it comes to knowledge in wrestling. Knowledgeable women who are just out there doing their thing. And I wanted to take the time to recognize a couple of the women that have inspired me that I see on social media doing their thing, whether we talk a lot or we don't talk at all. I feel like 
it's so interesting to see people and whether it's on social media or in person and you're like, you know what, I've been keeping up with them and you might not talk to them, but you see the moves and the waves that they're making. And that means they're doing something, right? Absolutely. You know, you make a lot of really good points, Lo. And I love the fact that you put the emphasis on knowledge, because I know when I first jumped into this business, that was certainly a thing. It, it was like, you know, you have the men in this boys club and the women are there but there were always the, always these little passive aggressive, like, does she really know what she's talking about? Or let me teach her or quote unquote mansplain or, or however you want to deem it. Um, there was always that kind of sensibility. And as a woman in this business, I think it's really important also to know that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. You know, a lot of people might feel as though they're having some sort of, I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe I'm a fraud. It, it's okay. You know, we're getting through this. You are smart. You're beautiful. You have the knowledge and it's okay to continue learning. And I think that's something that, you know, should be taken heed of. There's so much to learn and there's always going to be new things to learn about. So have fun in the learning and the knowledge as you keep growing in this industry and, and knowing that you're making a huge difference and people are watching and they're noticing what you're doing. Absolutely. So I wanted to recognize TK Trinidad of Women's Wrestling Talk, but I also wanted to recognize a couple of other people that they have on their staff. So Women's Wrestling Talk is one of the largest women's wrestling platforms that we have right now. And TK Trinidad started it. And she's done such an amazing job to cultivate a staff that comes from all different walks of life, different experiences and different skill sets. Someone that has really caught my eye. Well, two people that have caught my eye that are on their roster is um, Santana. She is the editor-in-chief of their online news website, as well as um, Nikki. She is also a news writer as well, but they are always on the Twitch stream. They call themselves the Salt Shakers, which I like, but they um, they do an amazing job. They have great chemistry together, but they do amazing work on there, and there's countless other women on that list that work at Women's Wrestling Talk that do a great job, but I wanted to recognize those two because it seems like every single time that I'm on Twitter, or Instagram scrolling through, they are on Twitch talking about whether it's Impact or Raw or NXT. At least one of them is on there. And I think a lot of us sometimes take for granted these individuals that go on live on Twitch late at night and think, oh, well, we'll just watch it the next day. But these individuals are so dedicated to their jobs that they go on there, you know, after NXT, after a three hour Raw, and they talk about it and they do such a great job and it's interactive and I think they're doing an amazing job, but also wanted to recognize TK because, I mean, she's built this platform that is just so amazing. You see them getting interviews with like Thunder Rosa and Mickey James and Rebby Hardy. And these women are working for those experiences and their knowledge as well as TK just really giving them those opportunities makes me happy to see as someone else that's within wrestling media. Because when I first started, we didn't have women's wrestling talk. And being a young woman that was still in college, you know, that would have been such an amazing opportunity for me. So seeing women that are, whether they're the same age as me, they're older, they're younger, now getting these opportunities, it makes me so proud that we have a platform for that. Yes. And, you know, fun fact, I met, not in person, I haven't met them in person yet, but during the height of the pandemic, I remember meeting Santana and Nikki uh, in, it, there were these clubhouse groups as oh, well yeah. as these different groups, you know, people were, were getting linked up with Discord and all of these things because we're all at home. So I noticed that during that time period, a lot of wrestling fans were coming together and everyone was at home watching the shows, watching, now they're called the PLEs. We were all watching the pay-per-views, PLEs. And we were just talking about what we were seeing on screen. And I definitely remember Santana and Nikki standing out to me because they had all of this knowledge. They had been longtime fans of the sport. And I love the fact that they were able to take their knowledge and their passion for the sport of wrestling and the art of wrestling and do these Twitch streams. And I see them doing their thing on Twitter. I see them, you know, really making sure that their voices are heard. And I love that. I love this for them. And they're working really hard, just like you said. So yes, I love those people. Picks. Shout out to Santana and Nikki. I'm so proud of them. I really are. And I hope they continue to go to the shows and continue to let their voices be heard because it's important. Two of the people that immediately came to mind are, as you know, those wrestling girls, Queen P and Krista. You know, they were also individuals that I met virtually during 
the height of the pandemic. And I remember, you know, we all came together and we were just talking about wrestling as you do and, and getting to know one another and becoming friends and seeing from that point, and this was around, oh my goodness, it was, it was most likely between 2020 to 2021, uh, seeing the growth that they've had since then and just seeing what they've been doing, going to more shows, you know, going to the press conferences recently for WWE, for their PLEs, and, and seeing them ask the questions and get more immersed, doing their Twitch streams, having their fan club, all of that good stuff, you know, it's really inspiring. And I'm glad that they are also making their voices known and heard and really giving shine to women's wrestling and really letting people know that, you know, there is power in numbers in women's wrestling and it's not going anywhere. It's it's not going anywhere as much as people want to <laughs> stay otherwise and, and clap back at it. Women's wrestling is here to stay and it's super popular and it's even more so because of people like Queen P and Krista. So I'm, I'm really glad that they're still doing their thing and working. Someone else I wanted to recognize is... Um, Suzette Victoria, she is the founder and promoter of Hit Club Pro. So that's a wrestling company. I actually came across her on Twitter probably like a year, year and a half ago. And I was just so surprised because I feel like when we think of promoters, we always think of men. And to see a black woman being a promoter in professional wrestling, it caught my eye. And I've kept up with her, haven't had like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her, but it's just so amazing to see because I think a lot of people have that stereotype in the back of their head, like, oh, a man is probably a promoter or whatever. And the fact that she is a woman and a black woman doing this, it just, it, I f love it. I think she's doing such an incredible job and she's had people like Trisha Dora on her car. She had Willie Mack on her car. She has Willie Mack again coming up on her card. And just to see that caliber of talent that she's able to bring in and have on her promotion is just amazing so she's doing such a great job and I think that's one that I definitely think other people should know about there's so many women in our community who love them to death they lay low and they do their stuff on the low and it's like you are doing such incredible things like you need to be recognized and she's one of them where I feel like she lays low and she minds her business and she just does her thing that's why I had her on my list because I feel like she does deserve that shine and you know I didn't even I hadn't even heard of her until you mentioned her to me low and I was like wait what what and it's it's shocking that I you know coming from PWI I'm like I didn't know, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm embarrassed, but I, I'm more so empowered to know that she is here and she's doing her thing and wrestling and being a promoter. And you're exactly right. You know, a lot of people just assume that a promoter is more than likely going to be a man, but to see her doing this and it's a treacherous business, there's a lot that you go through as a wrestling promoter, a lot of things that you have to juggle at one time. And the fact that she's doing it, she's successful at it, and she's a Black woman. You know, I'm I'm so happy that you mentioned her and you put her on my radar because now I am I'm I need to go see a show. I need to see what's right. happening. <laughs> and it, it's awesome that she's doing this. You know, it's, it's a really tough job. Very, very tough. So kudos to her. I love that. My next pick on that note is the Black Diamond. Robin Reed. You know, I had not met Robin. We follow each other, I believe, on, on Twitter. And I had heard about her because she used to be the former booker for Mission Pro Wrestling. Oh, okay. and, one, and this was several years ago. I believe it was also once again during the height of the pandemic that uh, she accrued this job. But I, you know, had to do my research on her. And she is quite accomplished. You know, she's trained by Booker T, uh, did her thing in reality of wrestling, uh, super successful there. And I believe she is also the disciplinarian in WOW. Uh, so she, and that's just a few of her accomplishments. She's done so much more, but um, it's wild that, you know, just like you said, there are people in this business who don't get enough shine. And I'm sure a lot of people know her and have heard of her and, and see her work, but I wanted to put her on my list because I think she should definitely get more flowers. I think people should recognize all the things that she's done in this business, whether it's wrestling, booking, et cetera, and that she's still, she's still hanging on. She's still doing it. She's still working as a black woman. I feel that you, ha I had to give her her flowers and I want more people to know what Robin Reed is doing. So shout out to Robin Reed on my list. My next one should not be a surprise, <laughs> but it is <laughs> it is Iridian Fear of the Rest Friends podcast. I feel like whenever I have a show, either Iridian is here or I'm talking about Iridian. This is not a paid ad. 
Aridian Fierro is, and I might be biased, she is one of the best I feel like we have in this community, and she is another one that lays low, minds her business, and puts out content. If you're not familiar with Aridian Fierro, she is half of Rest Friends. Um, Rest Friends is a podcast based out of Chicago. It's Aridian and her cousin Teddy. They team up and they talk about wrestling. They talk about the events that they've gone to. And they do YouTube as well, and they just do such an incredible job. But Iridian is actually in college, going to college for radio and media. And it's just amazing to see her growth. Like we met two years ago when we did a podcast and we have so much in common. And it's just amazing to see her creativity and how dedicated she is to making content. I tell her all the time, like, post your stuff, get it out there. It looks good. You know what I mean? And I really want more people to pay attention because, again, there's not a lot of Latino women within our wrestling community that's putting out content. Mm -hmm. I did mention earlier, it is very diverse now compared to when I first started, but there's still not a large group of Latino women who are sitting down doing YouTube, doing Twitch, doing podcast. And I feel like we need to recognize those women that are out there. We do have a handful of them. I would love to see more, but you know, we need to recognize the ones that are currently doing it. And I think Iridian is one of the best. And she also is a contributor to Sports Kita. Um, she makes some of their social media content. So, you know, you can catch her on different platforms, but her main one is Rest Friends. And go check it out if you have not. That's awesome. Shout out to Iridian. My next pick is, and we're speaking about diversity, doing fantastic things and within the year, just, you know, a lot of things are just exploding for her. Uh, her name is Marie Shadows. And I met her for the second time in person. Recently, I was doing commentary for Goddesses of War uh, this past Saturday, and she was there. Um, she is another person. She lays low, but she gets her work done. And it was nice to catch up with her and reunite. But she works with uh, or helping out with different promotions like Goddesses and Titans and so forth and so on. But she she's another person that's heavy on Twitch. She's trying to do more on her Twitch cast and get things out there. And she's a huge, huge, huge fan of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Like that is her thing. And she has a lot of opinions. She's always talking about New Japan, always giving us news about what's next. But she talks about wrestling in general and just gives people the low down, uh, no pun intended, low. <laughs> the low down on what's happening in wrestling in general. Uh, but recently, she created and she showed it to a few of us in person. It's the coolest thing. I think you can go on Amazon, if I believe, and purchase it. She created this planner, like this whole wrestling planner that you can use to write in and take notes and stay organized. Oh, and cool. it's the cutest thing ever. It is so cute. I wish, um, once I get a link for it, I'll ask her for a link so she can, you know, I, give it to me and I can give it to you. But it was so neat. And I love planners. I'm a planner girl. Like, that's how I stay organized. And I was like, I cannot believe that you made this. Like, she made it for people to purchase. And she's very creative. Uh, she used to do work for WWE at one point. And I feel like she just sits down, does her work, keeps it going day by day. And I wanted to give her her flowers for that as well. Because she's, she's doing a lot. And... I think more people should know about her and know what she's up to. So Marie Shadows. My final one on my list, and we'll go into the honorable mentions after, is professional wrestler Hyan. So Hyan has been doing some amazing things. First time I saw her was with Iridian. We were in Indiana, which you're probably like, why the hell were you in Indiana? I had went out to Chicago for Hell in a Cell, and we realized that there was a wrestling show in the state next door. And I was like, it's an hour away. We'll just go. Yeah. Um, Hyan was there, and... She immediately caught my eye because I absolutely loved her gear and her whoever makes her gear just they do such an amazing job like it hits every time but ever since I saw Hyan then I've just really kept up with her and she's had some incredible matches and she was on impact she was on ring of honor just recently with their tapings and I kind of fangirl a little bit because it's like oh my god these independent wrestlers they're finally getting their break and She's one that I feel like definitely deserves it. Oh my goodness. I love that we're on the same page because the last one on my list is also a wrestler. But I do want to add to what you stated. I love High End. Like, I'm so happy that she's finally getting on bigger stages. And I've been a fan for quite some time myself. And she's phenomenal. So 
I love, love, love that she's on your list, Slow. That's a great, fantastic pick. She's amazing. Um, a wrestler on my list and my last choice is someone that I met for the first time also recently this past Saturday at Goddesses. Uh, her name is JC Storm. I, you know, being a part of PWI, I'd, I'd heard of her uh, this within the year. Uh, she's just been someone whose name just kept popping up in co different conversations and, and on social media. And I'm thinking, what, who is this JC Storm? Let me see what's happening. So I've been following her for a little bit, but then I saw her finally uh, in person in the ring. And I must say, everything I've heard about this girl, it just is spot on. She is money to be quite honest i mean for just and she's only been in the business for two years like it's it's crazy seeing some of these talent that i look them up and i'm like you've only been in this business for a year two years three years and they're just it's like a fish to water she is just has a natural talent she's very charismatic and i just love seeing what she was doing in the ring she has a nice grasp on psychology and her gear is fresh. She just looks like a star. And I can tell that she's someone that people should definitely look out for because her name, and I know she's been on, she's already been on AEW Darks and, and a bunch of AEW television and OVW already in this short span of her career. So she's definitely caught the eyes of, of major players, but I feel like this is a year where you're going to see more of her and definitely see what she can do and she can only just progress from here but yeah jc storm definitely one to look out for very very cool individual so yeah some of my honorable mentions so i have three of them lizzie is a ring announcer for coastal championship wrestling i keep up with her on instagram and she does amazing work again i love seeing black women do this stuff there's just something that hits different when it's someone that looks like me that is doing things that when you look 10 years ago it was like, yeah, you might have had Lillian Garcia, but you didn't have Samantha Irwin in the ring. You know what I'm you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And seeing a black woman be a ring announcer, a black woman be a promoter, it just it hits different. It obviously hits different when I see a woman do it. But when it's a black woman, I'm like. I know that's right. Like, I just get so excited. <laughs> so she's one that I definitely keep up with. Mel Coleman Art. Um, she is on Twitter. Amazing. She has made some incredible art of different AEW wrestlers. And every time I see a new one, I'm like, oh, my God, this one's better than the last one. Like, how do you do it? It's <laughs> just incredible work. I think AEW needs to put her on the payroll. I know people have said it before, and I'll say it too. Like, her mm. work is incredible. She just, you can tell she puts her time, her effort, and her love into her work. And it just, it gets, like I said, it gets better every single time she posts one. And I'm like, how the hell is it getting any better, girl? But it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> my final one is Casey Leando, who is also a friend of mine. Um, she is a cosplayer based out of Texas. Casey, my dear, amazing. The cosplays that she does and cosplaying, I feel like is a whole nother conversation, but cosplaying involves so much time and energy and just effort. Like you really have to be dedicated to be an amazing cosplayer because mm -hmm. looking at pictures, finding the exact thing or something similar, it takes up a lot of your time and being able to recreate these looks like Casey has, has been amazing. I actually saw her like do one in front of my eyes like I didn't see her shop for the stuff but I saw her like put everything on and get ready to go and I'm like damn girl I would have been done after the wig like I'm tired watching you <laughs> went to Royal Rumble with Casey and a couple other of my friends and we went to WrestleCon which um I don't think I've told this story before but we went to WrestleCon and it was a very mini WrestleCon it wasn't like you know the 70,000 people that they usually bring there it was like I think it might have been like 20 wrestlers that they had there. And Casey was like, I'm going to do a DDP cosplay. So we were like, hell yeah, do it. So she gets puts the wig on, putting the tape on in the car. Gear is like A1. She is like amazing, right? So we go. It's in the mall that we were just in yesterday trying to get sponsored by Fat Tuesdays. If you know, you know. And yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we go up to the door and while we're walking to the door these guys are like they're not letting anyone else in it's closed and we're like whatever we're just gonna keep walking we go up to the door they're like yeah we're actually at capacity we're not letting anyone else in and Casey's sitting there in her cosplay pissed and I'm up there like we did not get into WrestleCon 
We did not. And there was a bunch of other people that were standing outside and they were obviously upset as well. That was a show. I will be straight up. And I know Casey put out a video after that. DDP recognized her and tweeted her and followed her and did all of the things. But like, that's a whole nother conversation. Russell Kong, you better have your shit together in LA because I do not have the time, baby. I mean, there's so many people that I'm just, just trying to think of. Um, Mia Friday, fantastic wrestler. I interviewed her. She is very young and already just like, another reality of wrestling star who's who's the sky's the limit for her um shout out to amanda who i met at mission pro last year i don't know if she's still their general manager but she is awesome um she definitely deserves props because i think more people should know about her she's a sweetheart too and we clicked instantly um and she she's just amazing so shout out to her at mission pro and i'm trying to think also um gia scott shout out to gia scott another wrestler uh you know doing great things still getting her name out there pushing the limits another wrestler rache chanel there's so many. Um, Rache did a lot of AEW spots when uh, they were having their pandemic era, as we know. Um, and I, I want to see more of Rache too. I really, really, I know she's, you know, one half of bougie reality with Maddie Rankowski uh, and she's still doing her thing as well. She's still kicking tail and getting out there. I know I'm seeing more wrestlers than not, but um, yeah, I'm just, that's just my stream of consciousness going, but, but those four, shout out to y'all. Definitely keep doing your thing. You're killing it. In your opinion, what is next for women within the professional wrestling sphere? We have women within Twitch. We have women podcasting. We have, you know, women writing articles, promoters, ring announcers, referees. Like the sky has really been the limit for women. But do you feel like there is anything that has been untapped by women in our industry? Wow. That's a hard one. I mean, you're right there. When I started in this industry, this was like mid to late 2017. So not too long ago, there just, you know, there were some YouTubers and then you had folks like me doing backstage interviewers or interviewing, uh, but it's grown so much since then. It is quite interesting just how much it's grown, but it's amazing at the same time. And I think when we're talking about like untapped, it's more so it's not as though the job isn't there. It's just, where do we go? Because now we have so much talent and it's a matter of growing what we have, whether it's in the independent space or it's, you know, for a major promotion like a WWE, AEW, MLW, et cetera. Um, where do we go? Because there's a lot, there's, there's more talent than I think a lot of promoters and bookers know what to do with, especially when it comes to women. But I also think that untapped potential automatically, I'm thinking it has to go with behind the scenes in the sense of like the promoters, the bookers, the, the writers, the people, the producing, those types of jobs. I think once we women in as a whole in wrestling we really tap into those core jobs and really get going in terms of like making our own promotions making our own shows i think that's going to be the elevation i really think it's it's at a point now where it's like yeah we want to see more more women in main events absolutely we want to see things like that but we also i hope can get to a point where it's like no we're going to create shows we're going to create these whole new verticals so that we can do what other people won't or can't do for us in their own, you know, positions of power. Yeah, that's where I, that's where I see things and envision things when we're talking about untapped potential. I definitely agree with you. I think the one area for me that I would like to see women tap into is that writing room at WWE. I think mm -hmm. it's been long talked about that there are a lot of men within the writing room and We've seen a couple women in there and they do some great work, but two that actually come to mind. One is the woman that wrote the Otis and Mandy storyline that caught a lot of people's attention and it had a lot of people really wanting to see what was going to happen with them next because it was something that, you know, we didn't expect to see within the WWE. It was comedic, but it was also like, hmm, it caught my interest. So they actually ended up getting rid of her. Yeah. And that caused a lot of controversy because people were like, she did a really good job. This was a storyline that people liked. They talked about, you know, it was popular online, et cetera. 
Um, and then the other one that comes to mind is the um, black woman who was a comedian that was very briefly with the WWE as a writer. She was fired as well. Um, I remember there was some backlash with her because she had gotten on a podcast and was saying she didn't know the product and a bunch of other stuff. But those are the two women for me that come to mind immediately when I think of female writers in the WWE and both of them ended up getting fired. I would like to hear about a woman. And I know we do have some women back there. You know, I know Molly Holly is back there. I know ultimate warriors widow is back there, but like, I would like to hear of black women being in that room, you know, writing and really bringing stuff to the table or even a woman of color, just someone that is not just your typical blonde hair and blue eyed. You know what I mean? I think having Molly Holly back there is great because she is a former wrestler and she still wrestles sometimes. And she has that perspective when she's writing or producing, but bringing in a woman that maybe has been at like an HBO or like a, you know, a major television network, but bring something interesting to the table because they've seen other things outside of just sports. And Hey, you never know. You could bring someone else in from sports, whether it's a UFC or an MMA or NBA, anything bringing that fresh perspective in really helps with the product. And I think now that we're in this kind of like transitionary period where I guess Vince is out of the picture for now. There's some conflicting reports. Who knows what the hell is going on? And Triple H is really the head of creative. I hope that we have that opportunity to see women of color, Black women, get in that writing room and take it by storm. Yes, yes. I love that you mentioned this, Low. And I think it in 2023 and beyond, we really need to get to a point in wrestling in general, especially with these bigger promotions, of making richer stories, of having different voices being told. I mean, there's a reason why you have shows that are just like a euphoria or, you know, any anything on HBO. Any show on HBO, it, a lot of people watch HBO, myself included, because of the storytelling. It's so rich, it's so diverse, whether it's dramatic or comedic. We are in a golden era of storytelling, regardless, on just on television alone. I'm not even getting into films. But just in TV, we're in another golden era of storytelling. And there should be no reason why that can't be the same for wrestling. You know, being a TV product, we're seeing things like the Bloodline story, for example. And people were so enraptured by it. And I'm like, yeah, because... It's wonderful, rich storytelling. People want to see that. They want to have stories that they can run and tell their friends about and say, hey, did you watch this? Did you watch that? It's that whole water cooler effect. But there should be no reason why we can't have women writers who can give a different perspective. Because to be quite honest, you know, yes, you can have a man write uh, write a story for a woman. However, until you step into a woman's shoes and actually know how a woman feels about certain topics, I think some things can be left for having a woman's voice in those realms. So I think that it's time we need to have that especially diverse voices, especially black women, you know, getting in there and stepping into the reins and, and giving us different stories. And that can only boost viewership and keep people engaged and keep people excited about the product itself. Same thing with AEW, for example, people are now wondering what's going on? Do you guys have writers? Like, we want to see stories. We want to see what's going on in your face. Like, we want it. We want more voices, you know? And and it helps. It's, it's a different perspective, especially when you have a woman writing different stories. And, you know, as a woman myself who's a writer, yeah, there there's so many different stories that can be told in wrestling, a ton, a glut of stories. And it's time for that. It really is. Thank you, Candice, so much for joining me on this Women's History Month edition of Wrestling Wind Down. Where can the people keep up with you on social media? Absolutely. So you can follow me on Twitter at Candice Cordelia or on Instagram, that girl Candice 16. Uh, and you can also follow me on TikTok. I'm trying to get with it at CC Speaks. I'll be putting out more as time goes on. Thank you for having me. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wrestling Wind Down. You can find all of our other episodes available wherever you listen to your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. We are on Twitter and Instagram at WWDCAST. We also have our official merch store, which you can find at shop.wrestlingwindownlv.com. Let us know what you thought about this episode. What was your favorite part? Until next time, enjoy your wine, and of course, enjoy your wrestling. Cheers! Cheers!